This is Jordan Tower with JT News. This will be the last video for the night. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And do not forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. It's very important. Don't don't jip me, guys. Okay, let's get right into it, all right? So we're talking about... We'll start off with Alpo, okay? So Alpo supposedly will be doing a movie soon based on his life. I thought we already got this movie, but I guess... This will be the story after Paid in Full, like what happened with Alpo. He became an informant and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and kind of like a deeper dive on his life because really Paid in Full was based more around AZ, you know. So this one will be based more on Alpo's perspective. And the person that will be pay, uh, playing AZ Faison is none other than Big Perm, Okay. So Faison Love, isn't that funny? AZ, Faison, Faison Love, and they both look similar, okay? So Alpo, uh, you know, a lot of people will have mixed feelings about this because, you know, Alpo was an informant, but he was legendary in Harlem, you know? Uh, watch a documentary on him. I mean, he was legendary. Yeah, he, whatever happened, happened, but, you know, you can't take the fact of what happened away Yes, you don't just erase it with one bad thing. I mean, it is shameful <laughs> in the street community, in the streets. But, like, you know, people want to hear the story. You know, and Alpo has a story to tell. And if you don't tell your story, somebody else will tell your story. So, people will watch this. Anything with Alpo goes crazy out here. Facts. Then we got um, Takashi beating out... Uh, French Montana. French Montana had this record out for, what, three years now? Unforgettable. Seven times platinum. Congratulations. But Fifi, one year, not even a year, with Nicki Minaj, eight million. Crazy. But Unforgettable felt like something more. But, you know, I guess you just, you know, you can't beat that Fifi. Then we'll get some random news. Uh, Yeezy gives Yeezys to DJ Khaled on the runway. Then we got Life Jennings reacting to, okay, so Charlemagne and um, Amanda Seal are criticizing Life Jennings for his song. It's called Slave, okay? Um, the Charlemagne cannot get past the lyrics, the new song Slave. And uh, his song says, I'm going to beat it like Slave uh, so you don't run away. Cut the whips and chains. Call me mouse. Now, Life Jennings reacted to this, them, you know, criticizing him. Amanda posted the video reacting to it, comparing sex to centuries of exploitation. He just said, some of y'all don't have any friends. If you did, you wouldn't make mistakes like this record. Life Jennings responded and said, you didn't post any of the positive songs I've been recording for the past, you know, 15 years, but you post this one. So uh, Amanda Seals, uh, the rest of the song was week two. But yeah, go off. Tank said, I can list plenty of rap lyrics that are metaphorically connected to the real past pain. And none of you said anything. Everybody just screamed bars. Sing your R&B music, Life Jennings. I like that. You know, it's like his, it's his music. Amanda Seals and Charlemagne. And, oh, yeah. Life Jennings also came for Charlemagne and said, hey, man. You have a colorful past with your allegations. Uh, I wouldn't be saying anything if I were you. So, you know, like we live in such a sensitive society. And like, what's funny is Char uh, Charlemagne talks about that, how it's too sensitive out here, but then he's participating in it. I don't know, man. Uh, let's see, here's Life Jennings. So I'm just hearing all this nonsense that Charlemagne the God and that one chick of man, I don't even know her last name. They're saying about my new song, Slave. So, you know what's weird is that y'all know that life can put out positive music my whole career. They ain't never supported my stuff. You ain't never supported Boomerang. You ain't never supported um, SEX. You ain't never supported all that good music I did for black people. And then, you know, trying to put something like this on your face. See, that's what's wrong with you black folks right now, man. You always want to grasp on to the most negative part and put it. But you can't support the good. So, if you offended by what I said, ladies, I have sex. I like sex. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I wrote a song about sex the first in my career. I like it. And if I offended some people, then I apologize to y'all that I offended. But in reality, man, you like sex too. You know what I'm saying? 
And Charlotte, man, come on, dude. With your cases, you know what I'm talking about, bro. You shouldn't even have said nothing, period. You know, it's not just one community. It's everybody. I think everybody's just way too sensitive now. Uh, you know, if you don't like it, don't listen to it, you know? And uh, lastly, I think, oh yeah, we got Diddy back up to a shenanigans with Lori Harvey. I, I love how nobody highlights that. You know, <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's like 27 years, 28 years difference. Diddy was 28 when she was being born. I just think that's super weird. And what makes it even weirder is his son dated this girl prior to him. I think that's just odd. That nobody, nobody will say anything about that. That's the funny thing. But it is what it is. I'm entitled to my opinion. You're entitled to yours. I get it. This happens every day. But Diddy, man, we hold him to a higher standard. That's my point. You know, like 30s. That's fine. 20 year difference. This girl's like 22, bro. It's like, it's a little, little, it's a little cringy at that point. You know, I can see 32, 30, 28, 20. I mean, but still not even that. I, w I wouldn't date that way, but he can, but like 22, that's a big, it's a big difference. <laughs> Jordan Dad would you, and it was your son's girl. That's really weird. That's weird. <laughs> Uh, I think that's what bothers me the most about it. Anyways, this is Jordan Tower with JT News, and I will check you guys later. Peace.